Good evening. My name is Mark Trusson, and I am your maths tutor here at Tuition Highway. Um, we're giving a demonstration lesson today on percentage change. Um, I hope you enjoy the lesson, and there are plenty of activities to get stuck into um, to give yourself some practice and uh, test yourself against uh, various questions, including some GCSE-based questions uh, and O-level-based questions at the end of the session. Um, so, on uh, the screen, you can see the objectives for today. Um, there are four objectives. Um, the first one is to understand how to calculate percentage increases and decreases. But importantly, the second objective is to apply your understanding to calculate real-life examples using the decimal method. And it's the decimal method today that we're going to be looking at, which will give you a really quick and easy way to calculate percentage change. The third objective is to use that um, information that you've had in the first two objectives um, to calculate compound interest. And we'll still be using the decimal method, but you'll, you'll see the linkage there. And then finally, um, to understand um, how to calculate percentage change. And, and again, there'll be some examples with regards to that. So we've got various worksheets for you to work through. And I'm going to pick up, uh, and you can see those here, I'm going to pick up one or two of um, those as examples as we work through. So I'm just going to change my screen to share this um, into a quick time player. So you can see my screen live um, as we work through this. So you will see two questions on the whiteboard here. Uh, the first one says increase 650 kilograms by 15%. Now, this is a very easy question, and I know that most of you would use methods such as 650, and then we want to increase it by 15%. So if we wanted to do that, we would find 10%. Find 5%, add them together, and we then add that to 650 to work out the answer. The problem with doing that is that A, it's, long, it's very long winded. Um, you've got to work out 10%, that's one calculation. 5%, that's the second calculation. Add them together, that's the third calculation. Then you've got to add that to the 650, which makes a fourth calculation. So that's one problem. The second problem with regards to this type of question, if you do it in that type of way, is what about if I change this from 15% to, say, 32.13%? Now we've got a whole raft of um, calculations that we'd need to do to work out the answer. So it's not a very efficient way to work out um, using the, the method I showed you just now. So I'm going to clear this screen, and I'm going to show you the decimal method to calculate uh, percentage increase. And then we'll apply the same method for the second question below, where you can see that it's subtly different because we're looking at percentage decrease. So we know that we want to increase something by 15%. But we also know that 650 is 100% of the original value. 60, 650 is 100% of the, this, this, this um, uh, weight that we have. So we want to increase it by this 15%. So what have we got of the original value? Well, we've got the two things added together. We've got 100% of the original value, and we've got 15% that we want to increase it. So what we're going to end up is 115% of the original value. So now we've got one calculation. We've got 650 times 115, and we know it's a percentage, so we've got that as our calculation. Very easy. Very simple. We also know, and you'll see uh, my calculator screen coming up, that 115 divided by 100, if we turn it into a decimal, is going to be 1.15. Okay, so I'm going to change this now to 650 times 1.15, and I've got one simple calculation to work out the answer for that question, increase 650 kilograms by 15%. Okay, I can do that on my calculator. 650 times 1.15, and I've got my answer, 747.5, and there we have it. So what we're doing is we're taking the, um, the uh, question, and we're just applying what we know about percentages, and we'll turn it into a very simple um, question for us to calculate. So let's apply what we've done to this second question here. Uh, we're going to decrease 45 by 9%. Now, there's a subtle difference here because we're not increasing, we're decreasing. 
But we know that 45 is 100% of our original value. And we want to decrease it, which is a negative takeaway, um, subtraction, by 9%. So we're going to end up with 91% of the original value. So we can do the same thing. We've got 45 multiplied by 91 over 100. Now I can simplify that again by saying 45 times the decimal of 91 over 100. Now I'm going to do it on a calculator again just so you can see what I'm doing. 91 divided by 100. That gives me 0 0.91. Now, as you become more proficient with these, you won't need to do this calculation. You'll just be able to do that part of it in your head very easily. Okay, so we've got 45 times 0.91. Okay, so now we just do one calculation. Here we go. 45 times 0.91, and we get 40.95, and that's our answer. Okay, simple, isn't it? So we've got a... Um, bunch of questions for you to, to have a go at, and that's on worksheet one, which you'll be able to um, download um, from the resources. So um, have a go at those, um, those questions and see how you get on. They're all increases and decreases, and use the, um, the decimal method that we've just been through to, to help you with that. Okay, so we're going to now move on to using this to calculate compound interest. Now, compound interest is, um, sounds quite complicated, but basically it's doing the same thing as we've just done, but over a number of years. So we're increasing something by um, a percentage over a number of years or, or months, depending on how long the interest is, is uh, applied to. So if we take this first question here, question two. A bank pays 3% interest on money in its accounts. Charlie deposits £180. How much will he have after seven years? Well, we need to apply the same methodology as we did before. We've got 180 is our 100% of our total at the start of the question. 3% is what we're going to add on. So we're going to add the two things together to give us 103%. So we're going to increase our original sum of £180 by 103%. Now, we did this um, 103 divided by 100 on the calculator before. We used that calculator there. Um, we don't need to keep doing that as long as we're confident. Well, I will do it one more time. I will do it one more time. So we've got one, oops, perhaps not. We've got 103 divided by 100, and it gives me a decimal 1.03. But as I say, you'll become very familiar with doing these. So we change our calculation to that, 1.03. OK, and I get an answer. The thing is with this question, and that's why it's a compound interest question, is that we are going to invest our money for seven years. So far, this calculation has given us interest for just one year. So what do I need to do to get to seven years? Well, I'd need to multiply it by 3% again. That would give me two years. And then again, that would give me three years. And then again, that would give me four years. And so on and so on, until I get seven years. So I'd multiply 180. Let's come down here, rub that out in a minute. 180 times 1.03, seven times. But that's not times by seven. That's multiplied by 1.03, seven times, itself seven times, which as you know will become an indice of seven. Okay, so again, I'm now down to one really simple calculation. 180 times 100% of itself plus 3%, which is 1.03, and I multiply that seven times. So if I go to my calculator, I can do that really, really simply. So I've got 180, that's my original sum, times 1.03, which is my percentage. And then I'm going to use um, my power button here because I'm going to multiply it by itself seven times. I'll end up with a grand sum of £221.38 if I round it up because we're, we're dealing with pounds and pence. So 22138. And again, one calculation, once we understand you know, what we need to do, a very simple calculation to work out our um, percentages. 
So I'm just going to rub this out and I'm going to apply the same thing. I'll change my color in a minute um, to blue. So I'll change that and we'll look at, while I'm doing that, just have a read of the second question. Okay, so Mr. Johnson buys a new car for £50,000, quite an expensive car, something like a Rolls Royce or something. Um, well, maybe not a Rolls Royce, but an expensive car anyway. Um, and the car decreases at a rate of 30%, which is pretty high rate of depreciation, but that's what tends to be the case with cars. Um, unfortunately, and if you need to drive one, you'll know that yourselves. Um, so we've got 50,000, which is our 100%. Remember, that's the original value, so we've got 100%. Okay, and we're decreasing it, so it's decreasing, take away 30%. Okay, so what have we got? We've got 70%. So we now are going to take our value and we are going to multiply by this 70%, which is 70 over 100. Okay, I'll rearrange that, so I reorder that, so I get the decimal 70%. Um, which is 0.7, you know that, just to illustrate that. And then we've got one calculation. Okay, now that's for one year depreciation. Okay, so we've got 50,000 times 0 0.7 for one year of depreciation, but it is asking me to depreciate it for two years. So we would need to multiply that by 0 0.7 again, all right? And we can simplify that on our calculator by having, I'll just jump up there, 50,000 times 0 0.7 and the number of years. So this time it's going to be um, to the power of two rule squared. Okay, so let's do that calculation. 50,000 times 0.7 to the power of 2. Now I've got a squared button here on my calculator, so I use that, which gives me a nice simple 24,500. Ouch. My lovely brand new car was worth £50,000 sterling, and it's now worth, after two years, £24,500. Ouch. <laughs> and that is pretty realistic in terms of depreciation of cars. Um, so quite a realistic example there. Okay, so again, there are some examples um, for you to work through where you can use these methods to um, calculate compound interest. Let's move on and we look at this um, percentage change. And we're going to use the same methodology that we've just applied, but using a little bit of um, algebra to, to, do, to do that. Um, so if you look at the first question here, we've got an amount increases from 20 to 70. What is the percentage increase? The nature of the question is different, isn't it? Because before we were given a question where it's got percentage sign in it. You know, what is 70% of something? Or what do we, you know, what's the answer if we increase something by 20%? Right? There's no percentage button here. You, what you're trying to do is you're trying to work out what is that percentage increase. So it's slightly different. Now, if you remember um, what we did before, we looked at what's the original sum? We called that 100%. Okay. Right. And then we um, took that amount and we multiplied it by the decimal of whatever the percentage was. But we don't know what the percentage is in this type of question. So we are going to use a little bit of algebra and call it A. So A is going to be, remember we had something like 1.03 for 3% or 1.8% for 80% or 0.7 if we're decreasing it, um, which is, you know, a decrease of 30%. Um, so we don't know what that is and we need to work that out. It could be one of those three things, could be something completely different. All right, but our answer is going to be, all right, this is the answer, all right, 70. Okay, so we know that Whatever we've done, we've increased it, and uh, we've got 70. It is an increase because it's gone up from 20 to 70. All right, so now we need to find A. So what would we do? Well, you go back to your algebra and you say, okay, how do I move this 20 over to that side of the equal sign? We're going to divide through by 20. So we get A equals 70 over 20. I'm going to do that in my head because it's fairly straightforward. That's 3.5, isn't it? All right, so my decimal is 3.5. Now, that's not my percentage because, as you know from previous screens, if I go back, you know, and we worked all these things out here, we started with this 70%, for example, and we turned it into a decimal. And we did that by dividing through by 100. So we've got to do the opposite. 
So here we've got to divide by 100 to find out what my, um, sorry, we've got to, what am I talking about? We've got to multiply by 100 to um, get my um, percentage. So if I multiply through by 100, I'll get 350. Now I'm still not quite there with the answer because again, if you go back to uh, my screen here, we started off with 100% and we took off 30 to get 70, or we started off at, um, with the previous example with 100% um, here and we added on the 15%. So we've got to make sure that we take that into account. So we've basically got to take that original sum off, that 100% here. All right, so that will give me now 250 and that's my percentage um, increase. Okay, so um, I've worked backwards basically. All right, so 250% is the increase, and that's the answer to to this bit here. So let's see if I just rub this little bottom bit out rather than all of it. How we apply that for the next question? Change the colour. Um, an amount decreases from 160 to 130. What is the percentage decrease? So we're going to do the same thing. That's our 100% and our starting point. We're going to need to take that 100% off at the end. Um, so we've got 160. We're going to times it by this unknown decimal and we're going to end up with 130. We're expecting, because of the decrease, that this A here is going to be less than 1. But let's find out. So we've got A equals, now how do I move that over to there? I've got to divide through because I'm being multiplied by 160, so I get 130 over 160. That's a little bit trickier for me to do in my head, so I'm going to go to my trust the old calculator. 130 divided by 160 gives me 0 0.8125. 0 0.8125. Okay. Now remember that we uh, now need to multiply by 100 because we were dealing with the census before. So we get 81.25. Okay, it hasn't decreased by 81.25 because um, we started off with 100%. So we need to find out the difference by doing that calculation. 100 take away 81.25. So let's see what that is. And we end up with 18.75. So we've got 18.75%. Sorry, I've run out of room a little bit there. Um, and our answer is 18.75% decrease. And that would make sense if you kind of do it in your head. You know, we started off with 160, 10% 16, 20% 32, take off 32, I'll get 128, I'll stay over there about. So it's going to be slightly less than 20%. So that's a, a nice little check for us. Okay, so we're going to do one more final thing. Again, there's some examples for you um, with regards to doing those types of increase and decreases to find the percentage increase and decrease question for you to work through. And finally, we're going to have a look at um, one GCSE question. There are more GCSE questions for you to have a look at, um, but here's an example of a, a, a typical GCSE or O-level based question um, using percentages. And some some will be harder than this and some will be easier than this. This is one chosen at random. Okay, so Harriet travelled from Bath to Cardiff to um, cities in the UK. Her average speed was 58 miles per hour. There's traffic on a return journey. Her average speed is reduced, which is an important key word, right, by 23%. Work out the average speed on a return journey. So 58 was our original sum, so that's our 100%. So we've got 100, and it's reduced, so take away 23%, which gives me 77%. So we're trying to find out 70% of the original 58 miles per hour. Okay, so we've got 58 times 77 over 100. Now, we've done this lots of times, so I'm going to do 58 times the decimal of this, which is 0 0.77. Okay, gives me one nice and simple calculation. Gives me 44.66 miles per hour. And there's my answer. So you can see through going the, through these various examples that um, you can turn quite complicated questions into quite simple um, calculations using this decimal method. 
So I'm just going to unshare my um, my screen and come back to the main video. So here were our objectives, and we've worked through all four of those um, very quickly. The examples that we did are through these um, worksheets here, which you can find um, on the Jewish, uh, Jewish and Highway um, uh, resources area. Um, just as an example, I'll jump into the exam questions there. There's the exam question that we completed um, at the top. And there's you know two or three more for you to, to have a go at. And the same with the, um, the other worksheets. This is the first set of questions that we went through. And you can see there's some examples there for you to have a look at. Same with the other worksheets. So that concludes today's sample lesson for percentage change. Um, we are going to come back to um, some uh, other topics in other um, some example lessons um, and um, we will probably pick up on Wednesday solving algebraic equations and probably work through some simple uh, you know uh, equations to start off with and then build that up to uh, more complicated unknowns on two sides and then maybe in the following session we can we can follow up with that with looking at quadratic equations and solving quadratic equations so we can kind of work through and get progressively difficult um, Hi Adil, nice to nice <laughs> join us. Um, I don't know if you can hear me, I've unmuted you. Are you able to, uh, to speak? Okay. Um, got a, that's it. So um, hopefully that, that was helpful to you. It is only a sample lesson. Um, we would spend more time on this if, uh, if you join um, you know, in, in more detail coming forward um, as, we, as we progress. So one final thing from me is to just think about what you might need to do to prepare yourself for the examination series in 2020. Um, so I'm coming away a little bit from maths at the moment and thinking a little bit more about um, general preparation. Um, but obviously I'm a maths tutor, so hopefully you'll take uh, maths as your as your first priority. Um, okay. um, so. We are going to do a series of, um, you know, sort of tips which we'll post up on our Facebook page just to start you to think about what you might need to do to get yourselves ready. It would seem that your exam series in 2020 is a very, very long way away. But believe me, it is not. Okay? The exam series in 2020 will start in probably May. Now, we are already halfway through July. We are already in the middle of um, holidays, and if you take out other holidays like um, you know, end of term one and the end of term two holidays and any half terms that you've got, the actual amount of working months you've got until you take your, your first exam is gradually getting closer and closer and closer. So the more you can start to think about now, the easier it will be when you come to um, preparing and doing revision you know, for your, for your um, exams. So tip number one is to get your folders organized. So take each subject and put them into a separate folder is my advice. And if you take one folder that will contain one subject, let's take maths as an example, then you need to subdivide that folder into the topics that you know you are going to um, have to access in relation to revising for the exam. So we've just covered, for example, percentage change. That will be one uh, part of your folder subdivided into percentage change. And put your notes into that area. So you might end up with 20 different areas, and those should link to the syllabus that um, you are studying um, linked to the exam board that you're going to sit at the end of the, uh, um, you know, when, when you sit the exam in 2020. So have a look at the um, exam board um, syllabus and divide your folders up into the headings for each of those um, that syllabi. Okay. Once you've done that and you've got them ordered, you know then you can come back to each of those sections uh, when you come to revise a little bit later on. And put your notes into those sections as you, as you work through. The second part of this tip is to then try and resource and find some questions that are GCSE or O level, or whatever um, the level of the exam is you're sitting, and put the links to those questions on a sheet so you can type those into something like uh, Microsoft Word, and you, you know, have the link there so you can click that link 
once you've been through your notes. So if I'm looking at percentage change, I've worked through my notes, I've got to the end of that, I click on some links here, it takes me to some exam questions. Complete the exam questions and then check those and cross-reference those to the correct answers. Um, you know, if you, if you source those through um, an exam board, then you will also get the mark scheme as well. So check that you've got the right answers against the mark scheme. If you do that, you'll be very you know, well organized and make a real step towards 2020. So that's tip number one for this season, and we'll be adding a tip um, for each uh, week as we progress towards uh, 2020. So thank you very much for um, attending today's session on percentage change. I hope that's been uh, useful to you. And as I say, we've covered those four um, objectives as we've worked through. And I look forward to uh, seeing you again on Wednesday, um, UK time, 2 p.m., Pakistan time, 6 p.m. Okay, thank you very much.